I'm Clay Archer, this is Ride the Wave Show, we're here at Southeast Bay! <laughs> this is going to be our site for today's uh, game show, and for this week's game of the week, it is going to be Southeastern versus Huntington. Generally, I think it's going to be a good game here, both t schools looking to get their first SVC win. Uh, behind us, we have some signs here, we're going to take a look at them, I'll read them to you as loud as I can. All right, so first we have 99 problems, but the township ain't one. You think you can beat us? Now that's fantasy football. Your mom called, you left your game at home. Win or lose, we don't live in township. Trick or treat, smells our, smell our cleats, Panthers pride, can't be beat. I tried to change my password to Huntsman, but Gmail said it was too weak. Daddy money, can't buy a win. At least the band can put on a show, and the alphabet has more W's than Huntington. All righty, Joey. Now, I know which one you think is the best sign. It did come in second for me, but I think I got to go with the one that gave me the first belly laugh. The alphabet has more W's yep. than Huntington. So give it All righty, come in with your name. Peyton. Peyton. Peyton, what made you come up with that great saying for your sign? Just came to you? Yeah. All righty. So if you had to pick between McDonald's and Taco Bell, which would you pick? All right, so Friday night we'll have a $25 Taco Bell gift card for Peyton! Yeah. All right, Joey, I think we got the show kicked yeah, off to start. I think you really miss it. I'm going to have to grab yeah. one of those signs here. I'm going to take that one with me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So as you can tell, Joey's excited to be here because I, I think he just won his favorite sign of the day, right? I'll take that one with me. Uh, we want to give a huge shout out for Southeastern, these beautiful facilities. Uh, they've been uh, great hosts so far. Really want to give a huge shout out to the uh, cheerleading coach. She's been awesome. Speaking of coaching, Joey, I feel like when it comes to football, the coaching style is a little bit different than other sports. Yeah, I, uh, through my career, I've been lucky enough to coach uh, four varsity sports. Uh, and, and by far, football is the most intense during the game. You have the most impact on, on the game. You're controlling every aspect. Uh, and, you know, I, I coached golf for a little bit, and you're not even allowed to talk to your players as they're playing the sport. That's so there's, wild. <laughs> so there's, so there's no direction. No in-game adjustment. No, no. Uh, you know, kind of saying, you know, on a, a track meet, you, you get everything ready for that track meet, you set, and you're doing organizational things. Um, but you're, you're not impacting every e part of it. So, you know, training basketball, I had to teach myself that too, of like the left, to let the game just happen. You know, not to stop the momentum, right? And not to overcoach it. But in football, everything's organized. Imagine, you know, trying to have your best player make a play and you just can't get them organized. Right. You know, right. You, know, you, you might be setting up for a field. I know Southeastern got a field goal kicker here that's impacted a lot of different games. And imagine not just being able to get them lined up so your player can make the play. Right. You know, you might have a lineman go down and you're talking about the third, uh, third backup coming in. How do you organize that within the game? So, uh, you know, that, that, that's a big thing. In how, how, how coaches can make adjustments while still dealing with their personnel and implementing the game for them. So, uh, it's, it's a big thing. And I think it's another thing, too, about the in-game adjustments, but I feel like momentum in football is probably the biggest swinger than almost any other sport. We got to see it in week uh, three with that Waverly and Yoda game. You got to have all the momentum. Waverly does a hook and ladder at halftime, steals the momentum, and then you know does a score, Waverly gets two touchdowns, and just swings like that. So with, with coaching as well, it, it takes momentum. When, when the momentum is taken from you, what do you do as a coach to try and get that momentum back, especially when it's going to happen? The first thing is how quickly can you adjust? Right. And, and I, I think, you know, when we start talking about the last week's games, you know, I want to get into that with the, with the Team Valley game. Number one, how deep are you into your playbook? What can you do to start it? You know, you know a waiver had that hook and ladder in their back pocket. Now, Maybe if someone's not in, do we not be able to call that? How much do we practice that? Right. You know, that, that you, you got to have those puncher's chances. Uh, right. And, and can you, when can you do that? Do you have the right personnel on the field to do that? Right. Uh, do you got the right matchup for all that, you know? Um, so that's the big thing is, is can you adjust? Can you take the shot? And then can you get back on track? Uh, and, and again, that's trusting in your kids and having them prepared. Right. And, and uh, Coach, I, uh, I think somebody that could be a good uh, person to ask about coaching would be Southeast's coach, Coach Blair. Thank you for coming on, Coach. 
So, Coach, uh, first, I, I just want to say thank you again for coming on and being here a part of with us. I know this is uh, not your first year. You've been here for a couple years at, at uh, Southeastern. What has it been like being able to take over this program? Um, you know, it's something that, that's real special to me because I grew up here. I was in high school here. Okay. Um, you know, I, I played on one of the fo first Pee Wee football games, played on the field. Oh, wow. I was a water boy as a little kid here. So, you know, Southeastern football is something that's been really special to me. So to get the opportunity to come back here and, and try to lead the football program, uh, you know, to, to a place where I want it to be, where we want it to be, where we consistently be well, uh, you came in after you know, a couple of good balls, these are some big things. Uh, I read an article about how you just want to bring that crowd back to the, uh, the Panthers here. So, uh, as, as uh, a former coach myself, I love to just see that. The first thing that you want is pride back in your school. Yeah, you know, to me as a kid, there was nothing better than growing up here at Southeastern. And being proud of being from here and, being, and the world is so It is awesome. Yeah. Hear these kids, yeah. Um, and, and to want to make sure that they grow up feeling the same way I grew up is a big deal. Heck yeah. Uh, so, coach, I was I was one asking the what are some key things that we might be seeing you guys you've been maybe working in practice on trying to uh, tighten up before getting into uh, the game on Friday. You know, football's a, a simple sport, but simple doesn't mean easy. Uh, you know, we want to win the field position battle, we want to win the turnover battle, and we want to win the explosive play battle. Um, so, so how those three things happen and, uh, will determine on Friday. I mean, that's what, what you look and that's what the game plan goes into, but that's really what we're going to focus in at. All right. Joe, do you have some questions, Coach? Yeah, you know, as you, I see you moving the football a lot, you're putting up points and everything like that. Uh, you know, how much that, you know, are you got in your, your playbook? Are, are you feeling comfortable with that? Do you have everything in at this point? Uh, you know, you're talking about those explosive plays, you know, as you're developing all that. You know, where where are you with that? It's something that, you know, you you got a base offense that you run, right? And, and every week that our base offense, you want to run that. And it's building explosive off those base plays. So some some weeks it might be a little different depending on you know the coverage we're going to see. Um, if we know a team is going to play man when we're in our eye stuff, man, we we like that because you got a kid like Gage Cheadle, and, and we think if he gets a step on somebody, he's uh, he's going to be open and he's going to catch the ball, and Joey can get him the ball. So. Um, week to week, we got our stuff and our explosives that we want. Like, you know, we got probably stuff we practice every week that we think are explosive plays. So when we look at our play sheet going into Friday, and we're looking at our menu, it's like these three or four things we're practicing all week because we think those are 20 yard games or better. Um, Bread and butters. Yeah. And, and so, but then you, you get your, your tweaks that you might make every week based on what the opponent you're playing for. Right. right. Uh, so, Coach, this is the Ride the Wave show. We do extensive journalism here, so I got a couple questions for you. One, who's your favorite NFL team? Who are you rooting for on Sundays? Oh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ah, uh, well, we're done here now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Uh, hey, it looks like you guys have a good defense behind you this year uh, and everything like that. TJ uh, Watt's the best. Dude, I will say. He's the second best because Miles Garrett is getting up there with him. But, you know, <laughs> I'm a Browns fan, but hey, no, 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 no. And we do ask the hard questions here. So I was wanting to ask you, if you had to pick a coach, make the team meal, what coach would you pick and what do you think they're cooking? One of our assistant coaches, a running back coach, Coach Chris Jones, owns a food truck. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Jonesy's Meats and Sweets is the name of it. All right. Uh, and they make a great, like, uh, nacho kind of with okay. uh, like pulled pork on top and some barbecue sauce. I think I, think I might have had them at a it's banquet good. before. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was out of this world. So that's who I picked. All righty. Well, you guys heard it here first. Go to, uh, what was this food truck called again? Jonesy's Meats and Sweets. You heard it here first. Go check this out. And uh, Coach Blair, thanks again so much for having us on. Thank you, guys. For coming on. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Well, Joey, I think that was a, that was a free plug should get us nachos. I was about to say, we, we at least get the free nachos now. So, uh, you're thinking in the right direction. Um, th uh, speaking of thinking in the right direction, Joey, a uh, couple of games from last week to harp on. Uh, I was going to go with the Chill Coffee Hillsboro game. I thought it was finally the first game that Chill Coffee might have a test against a similar matchup. They have some injuries, though, to the lead back, Sean Smith. They get in a 17 nothing hole at halftime, come back tied at 17-7, get to double overtime, just out of the field goal block, land back for a touchdown, but then it doesn't count. 
then Hillsborough has to get another touchdown basically to win the game. Uh, I just wanted to say, but what a great game that was. Uh, we got the chance to kind of watch Hillsborough a little bit more. They have a dynamic duo in that backfield back there, and it was on display. So I'm kind of excited to see uh, what they do this week. Joey, what's a game that you uh, had your eye on from last week? Well, as, as I was talking about adjustments before and where, and where, you're, where you're getting in at the game, I, I have to talk about the Paint Valley Adina game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Paint Valley ended up going on to score 74 points in that game, but it was a, it was a 35 to 35 halftime score. It, right. it was high. Uh, the adjustments that came in for the second half really, really played. Uh, uh, I, I don't know that you know, Dino was trying to take away the free kid, which left uh, the Robertson kid a little bit of a running room. They couldn't get eight in the box. Right. Uh, Payne Valley finally kind of stopped some of the, the running attack and made some of their, their defensive adjustments. So that really, really turned into to, to a different game. And, and uh, you know, Dino, Dino's putting up points. They are. They're, they're, they're a dangerous they team for, for whoever they play every time. Uh, Adidas offense is going to win the games they maybe not have won. Should have won. Uh, we got to watch them against Zane Trace, and I'm not going to lie, we all thought that Zane Trace was going to win the pretty handily, but Adidas offense just had big play after big play and kind of keeps him in there. Uh, somebody that honestly knows a lot about big plays here, Joey, is going to be a quarterback that has the arm of Iron Man, if I do say so myself. It's going to be the Southeast quarterback, Joey Pfeiffer. Yeah. How's it going, man? Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Nice to meet you. Joey, how's it going, my man? Uh, pretty good. All right, so we asked your coach. He said he's a Steelers fan. I'm going to just say right off the rip, what's your NFL team? All right, there well, there I'm the lone man up here. He's got a great Brown. name, by the way, and likes the Bengals. I'm all There, there we go. <laughs> uh, so, Joey, uh, I just want to ask you, what has it uh, been like, you know, uh, You've been at Southeastern for a few years here in high school now, uh, coming up through the program. What's it mean to you to be the quarterback of the Panthers? Right. 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 So, what's uh, what's the mindset? You, uh, you know, you're the quarterback. You got to be a leader. What's the mindset that you have, kind of going into each game? Uh, just to win it. Play for the seniors. I want the best yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I, it's good to have the mindset of winning going into the games because you have the other mindset that's probably yeah. going to happen a lot. Um, you and uh, Gage Sheeto, man, you guys have been on a connection. Uh, being a Bengals fan, like Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, it's like you're, it's like you're number one out there. What, what's it kind of like to have a, a wide receiver out there that you know you can trust? Right? I mean, I feel like I'm going to For years, it's almost like you can know where he's going before he's even there. That's really awesome. Uh, so, Joey, we're, we asked the hard questions here at the uh, the Lane Show. So, we'll kind of uh, get you there. What type of leader do you see yourself? Uh, I think I'm a motivation. Motivation? Okay. That's awesome. Uh, Joey, do you have any questions? Talk about that connection with Cheeto. Uh, when you look at that, is is that a connection that is technical, or are you just more ad libbing with him? Do you just feel like it, you know his routes at the top of, or can you guys ad lib together? What's what's kind of that? How does that work? I usually always know, like we'll talk and like we'll plan stuff before the play, and we're on the same page. We're on the same page there. Yeah, okay. that's awesome. Do you guys play any other sports together? Uh, we play all sports. Oh man, so that's where like yeah. so not just one sport, but multiple. Sports every year, you're just gonna have that connection. Watch out for him on the uh, pickup ball board. Uh, um, all right, Joe, so we got a couple more questions for you to get you out here. Uh, if you could choose your walkout song, if you were to tell the newest player, what would your walkout song be? Oh, yeah, I love that. Here comes the boom. <laughs> I love that. Okay, um, and then who on your team? Has the strangest pregame ritual to you? I'm gonna have to go with Colton Baxter. Colton Baxter, what is it? What is it? It's just not normal. <laughs> I love it. Nothing about him's normal. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, you guys heard it here first. If you see, uh, what is it, Colton Baxter? Yep. Yeah, if you see him on the field, be ready to get hit because those pregame rituals got him going. Uh, the one, the only, Joey Piper. Joey, thanks for coming on, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Joey, after talking to him, I. I'm ready to see this offense on uh, Friday night with him and Cheeto. They've been really picking it up this year. They, they've been explosive. Yeah, they put up a lot of points. I've, I've seen uh, over 25 in a couple of different games and everything like that. So when you have that offensive puncher's chance, it's always, you know, it's always a great weapon. Right. And, and we're going into the games uh, this week that we're eyeing. I have two here. I actually 
was I in this game uh, a couple weeks ago when we put out our schedule with Huntington. Is that because of your tattoo? It is because of the tattoo. I know. Hey, Pay Valley Nation, it was for a good cause. If you're not at it, get over here. It was for a good cause. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Over. <laughs> I don't live there. I don't live there. Um, no, but I uh, I was actually looking forward to this game. I think it's two teams that play a similar style. They have that. They're kind of right there neck and neck with each other. I, I think we have a pretty good game out here on Friday night. Um, another game I'm looking forward to this week is Westville at St. Trace. A lot of people might think of the K Valley Python with Piketon two losses in a row and Pay Valley really grooving there, I think it's going to be hard. I think Zane Trace might be looking ahead a little bit to Uniota, and Westfall is not a, not a school you can overlook. I mean, they, they've been putting up big points. They have Bryce Wickline out there throwing the ball around. They have multiple weapons. They're a team that can really hurt you if you're not paying attention to us. Yeah, I, I chose this game as well because, you know, the Bearcats go in by four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Westfall has had a lot of teams on the road. They had them by the throw. Uh, and, and Zane Trace has, has, has got to be more of what we thought they may be, but they haven't got to the meat of their schedule yet. Yes. And, and that's coming down to the, the rough guys. They have a rough, they have Uniota, they have Payne Valley coming up. I mean, we're getting into the good part of this and this game. There's going to be a lot of games that have title implications to it. So I'm really excited to see how this SEC is about to start matching up here. Um, with that being said, Coach, I think it's time to get into the pickings. Okay. So uh, we'll start with Paint Valley, 5 and 1, 3 and 0 in the league. They're at Piketon this week, 4 and 2, 1 and 2 in the league. WKKJ will be there uh, to cover the game. Coach, who you got? Pay Valley by 40. Heck yeah, heck yeah. yeah. Now, in all honesty there though, no, this is going to be a, a, a good matchup. Um, and, and it's going to be if Paint Valley's front line can get to the quarterback. Right. Again, Coach's son, they have the full playbook in. He's throwing it around. If they can't get him off of his mark, then then, then Pay Valley will, will will have some issues there. If they get him off of his mark, you know, then Payne Valley's yeah, offense will, will probably take over at that point. They can kind of bully him around. So it, 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 there's going to be a dynamic there up front. I think that I think it comes down to that as well, Coach. I think with that line play, Piketon's going to be so interested in trying to stop Braylon. I think you got to watch out for Carson Free. He has had the, the breakout game we've been expecting. I think that's this week to kind of get the uh, second half of the season really rolling. I'm going with you. I think Payne Valley, excuse me, wins this one. Next up, we got Westfall. Three and three, uh, one and two in the league. At Zane Trace, four and two, three and zero in the league. Still going for that gold ball. Coach, who do you have in this one? Uh, I'm going to go with Zane Trace in this one, but I don't think this one's going to be decided until way late. Uh, again, West Falls has weapons. They've had some people. They just need something to break their way. And, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be this one. I, I agree with the coach. I think West Falls, it might be another Union like game where they kind of maybe get a lead in the beginning. Zane Trace has that experience, so I think it prevails later in the game. And they come back and they get a close win there. Um, next on the list, Uniota 5-1-3-0 at Adena 1-5, 1-2. Big rivalry game for these two schools. These are two schools that straight up do not like each other. Uh, who do you have for this one? Uh, again, like I said, uh, Adena's that, that that scary team is at the home run power. They can hit it at any time. Uh, but I think that you know it's just going to kind of overwhelm them with athleticism, you know, all over the place. So I, I got you to know this. Uh, so I uh, had the pleasure of uh, interviewing Ethan Summer after the game last week and he told pretty much every single school we are coming and I think they are coming uh, this week for Adina and they're going to be coming right hard so yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with you Yoda. probably pretty big in this one uh, next up we have Jackson 5-1, 1-0 at Miami Trace 4-2, 1-0 coach we talked about this on the show Monday Let's Miami Trace has a duck one for FAC but Jackson Let's is Jackson Joey. I have Jackson by probably Let's quite a bit I'm, like, yeah, I'm the same way even though they're, they're, they're traveling Joey. up to Miami Trace uh, and, you know, the up there. Uh, I really think Let's that go, Joey. Jackson's just going to kind of run them here yeah. go, uh, next up we have Hillsboro 3-3, three and 1-0 three, oh in the league. Again, with that powerful backfield, they're hosting. Washington Courthouse 3-3, 0-1. Three three, oh Washington Courthouse uh, coach is kind of like the West Bowl and the Adidas. They have a very big explosive power here. So um, I think I have to go Courthouse on the road by 
by a touchdown. What about you, Coach? Yeah, I'm going to go opposite of you here. You know, courthouse traveling into Hillsboro there, you know, home field advantage. I'm going to get, give them a couple extra leans there, a couple extra points. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Hillsboro, not back. All right. All right, guys, hey, I'm going to say now we have the game of the week. When I say that, you guys just go absolutely wild. All right? All right, ready? And now we have the game of the week. Oh! And it's all the Southeastern hosting Huntington. Both schools looking for the first win in the SBC. Southeastern looks to have that explosive cheater oh! fight for basketball. Oh! Huntington looking to play the first. Good team over here. Number one problem. Southeastern's got the offense going. Southeast is going to put up big numbers on them. I got Southeast. All righty, Coach. So we got one Southeastern. Um, I think Huntington, they got a good running game. I think they're, they're finally figuring some things out. They've got good defense. Southeastern, they have that explosive offense like we've been talking about. They're playing here at Southeastern. I got to go Panthers here, Coach. I think that they win by a touchdown or two. I, I, you're disappointing your new school. I know. I know. I know. I know. Right I know. Off, hey, one week into it. A bear, what else would they expect a Bearcat to a Huntsman? To let them down week one. <laughs> All righty. So that's going to be a pick em here. But one thing we have left to go here, Joey Piper has probably the biggest five throws of his entire life. He is going to be throwing to hit the goal post. Now here's the take. We have six pizzas, coach. We have six pizzas to give away. If he hits the goalpost, Southeastern gets all of them. If he doesn't hit the goalpost, they got to split them with Huntington. Oh! Will he hit it? Let's go find out. Let's go! Peace out.